All right then guys, well welcome back to another video from Reef Drama. Today we're going to get straight into it. I'm going to show you what I've bought. You may have already have seen, I put a sneak preview on my Instagram page last night of uh, what I've kind of accidentally bought. Um, and I'll put the, uh, the Instagram link sort of down here on the screen. But, wait for it. We've got one of these! Oh yeah! So, Reef Mat 1200, obviously for the 625. XL G2 that is behind me. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to going to kind of very quickly and put that down. Very quickly, just have a quick look at that. It's uh, slightly different in the fact that I bought it second hand, and all I've done so far is I've just kind of like opened up the top and just had a quick look in. I haven't taken it all out yet, so we're going to have a quick check. See obviously uh, how that's come because it has obviously already been set up before in someone else's tank. They had it for about six months, um, and then uh, and then obviously have sold it on. So I've now got it, uh, and then what we're going to do then is I'm going to basically take out my DIY wheel, wear spillway, whatever you want to call it, and all the filter cups. Get all that out. We'll get this in. I know there's lots already on uh, on YouTube of unboxing and setting up and all that sort of stuff, but we'll we'll just briefly go through it anyway, and then we're going to see how uh, how we get on with it. So I'm really looking forward to getting this into the tank. So without further ado, all right then, guys. So here we go. Let's have a quick look at what we've got in here. Um, now it's it's been packaged uh, by the looks of it all uh, back in its original sort of bits and pieces. Um, the first thing at the top. Uh, it looks like we've got the drive unit itself in there. Well, then just basically straight away, here it is. So we'll lift it up and out, and then I can try and hold it. There we go. So obviously, as you can see, the, the roller is already on. Um, the, uh, the dirty roller, <laughs> thankfully, has been cut off and has not been posted to me. Um, and all the bits and pieces, by the looks of it, if you can see, are kind of all in, in there. Um, whether this is exactly how it would arrive if it was a brand new, um, I don't know. And then just in the bottom, we've got the hose um, that uh, has obviously already been cut, as you can see by the end there. So I'm really hoping that that's going to be, it should be, I think, long enough. Um, the difference hasn't been put in here. There is a little rubber o-ring, red rubber o-ring that's in there. I'm assuming that that might... No, it's too small. So I don't know where that's for. Um, nothing else in the box, so let's get rid of that. We've got an instruction manual. So yeah, that's good. Probably going to need that. Oh, there's an extra little bit. That's probably what was cut off of that. So actually, that's not too bad. Um, there's only that little bit there that uh, has been cut off. We've got some packaging. Get rid of that. And we've got the cage that goes at the very bottom. You can put media into this, like uh, carbon or uh, I suppose Roafoss, I guess. And what else have we got? The box, this is your power supply in there. Um, oh, well, they've yep, we still got all the little accessories, hopefully in there, in the little bag. So that's good. Another little bag of accessories. Ah, these are the feet. So you can actually sit this on these feet and connect that under there so it sits up in your sump if you don't want to use this part here to overhang on the front of your sump. Uh, I will be overhanging it on the front, I'm not going to use the feet. Uh, that's an empty bag but it said sensor assembly on it but you can see that the sensor assembly is actually already in position here. Uh, with the wire going down into there, which is what we will need to connect into the back of our uh, power box. So as you can see, that's poking out the back of the box, so it will go into one of those. And we've got uh, one of the guide rollers. We've got, that's it, essentially. And uh, basically, that is how much roll I've got um, that's come with it. Uh, if I quickly unscrew the one end, We'll see, there we go, so that's that's how much I've got. These normally come in, I think, about 90 odd feet in length. Um, although this is the 1200, so it might be slightly different, but uh, yeah, no idea what's in there. I'm definitely not unrolling that and, me and measuring it, so 
we'll just go with that but I will buy a new roll uh, very soon anyway so that I've got one ready for as and when this runs out uh, so I think basically what's next is getting everything out of the sump and uh, and then we'll install this so can't wait Right then guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of this out now. Um, as you can see, with uh, mentioned earlier about the DIY spillway or spill weir, um, the water's obviously still going down into here and then I've got this sort of curved up over uh, piece of perspex that runs up against the flat edge of the glass that's here, uh, which forces the water up and over and then sat on top of where the uh, cups are there's some egg crate, flat piece of filter floss. And as you can see, it captures quite a lot. But you can also still see down here in the cups that it is still um, getting some debris and detritus through. Uh, and this is what we're trying to eliminate, is having filter floss with debris or detritus in the water column for a length of time, whether that's three days or a week or whatever before you replace it. This filter roller will keep this dirt out of the water column and up and over onto the back, obviously on the dry part. So anyway, let's take all this out. So as I say, first piece that's gonna come out is this piece of uh, filter floss. Now I've got a rug down on the floor here and I've also got a large um, plastic container uh, just down on the floor so we can basically take everything out and put it into the, uh, this plastic container. Cup lids that come uh, with this G2, so these sit on top of the, the cups, and, uh, and if you didn't have the filter floss on top like I had, then this would kind of quieten down uh, quite a lot, actually. It does work very, very well. Um, but obviously, we're not gonna need those anymore. Um, so next, I'm gonna take out the filter floss that's in these cups. You can see I just roll these up, basically. Um, they're not doing too bad. Just get all these out. Okay, so that's all the filter floss. Uh, all the cups can come out. Okay, let's take this out anyway first. So this just slides up and out. And there you can see sort of maybe a much better kind of picture of, of how I did that. And now we can get these cups out. Like so. And now we've got to take out this piece, so I need to figure out why this isn't sliding out. There must be something stopping it. The, um, the whole good thing about this G2 is that this whole bit slides completely out, and then this glass also slides completely up and out. So um, let me investigate why that isn't coming out. It could very well be the wire to my Senai that's stopping it. So uh, I'll be right back. I realized what it was that was stopping this from sliding out nicely. Um, and that was basically because the um, divider here that runs between this sort of first section where the skimmer is, before it goes over into the rear section where the uh, Cheeto normally is, um, I have this raised up slightly. So not only does the water go through the top with the little grids here, but also because I've got it raised up at the bottom by about sort of so much, it also sucks water from underneath as well. And that's what was stopping this from coming out. So this should now just slide out and I've also removed the nitrate pearl reactor. So this can come out. There's obviously a little bit of debris and detritus there. They're caught up on the corners in here, I should imagine, in the runners. So that's what's floating around in the, uh, in the sump now. Uh, now we can take hold of this glass piece and this should lift straight up and out. Look at that, it's so much easier. So glad I did this with this tank and I didn't try and do it with the old 425 because um, although you can do it with the old 425 or the, the, the G1 I suppose or the version one Red C, but you've got to basically take out all of this, you've got to dig out all the, the silicon and take out the glass. And I've known people that's like cracked the glass and broke it, trying to get it out and trying to, oh, it's a nightmare. So G2 is so much better for this very reason. It is just, obviously it's reef mat um, acceptable, you know, whatever you want to call it, it just goes straight in. So that's basically all I need to do now with that. So the other thing that I need to do is just take off this down pipe 
and I'm hoping that it's not too tight in the fact that, oh look at that lovely jubbly, just unscrews, drop that out, there we go, one piece of red pipe, now although I like the red pipe, that's a shame that we're losing the red pipe and we're going to obviously have a black flexi hose going up there, I think uh, it doesn't matter too much especially now we're going to get a reef mat going in here. Right, next thing then is just to get the reef mat in. Let me go and get it. Oh, just to show you the O-ring, I've worked out that that fits into there, so that when your hose obviously gets screwed onto there, it creates that water, sort of that seal for the water so it doesn't leak out. We've got the cap on the other side as well here. So this just unscrews, and then you've got the, the little cap bit inside, and if you can see that, um, and again, another rubber O-ring on there. Now eventually what I might do is plumb up the overflow pipe so it goes into that part. So both uh, overflow and the main um, drain uh, kind of is going all through this reef mat. But for now, we're just gonna do the main drain. Um, I've had to remove the reactor as well, obviously to be able to get the, the filter tray out. So now it's in, now you can put all the bits and pieces inside and everything else, so that's fine. Right then, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, measure up this pipe. Now this part here um, is gonna go onto uh, this end of the pipe. That's gonna get slotted into there, and I think it's got like a left-hand thread or something to get wound in. And then this part will go up and under uh, and get connected to where the uh, downpipe uh, originally was. So I'm gonna to need to sort of measure this. You know, roughly it's gonna be like that. The intake is there. We want a little bit of a nice kind of bend on it. Nothing too crazy, so I'm probably gonna cut it, you know, roughly about here somewhere. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm gonna do a proper measurement now, and then I'll come back to you once, um, once I've measured it and fitted it all up. Right, okay then guys, so I've cut this now. I've uh, screwed this down into the side of the actual reef mat itself. Um, and then with regards to this end, we made sure we've got the rubber O-ring on. We're just gonna lift this up. This was all obviously on here for the original pipe. Uh, that is going to sit onto there. That's what that red O-ring is for. This will then just uh, screw down onto the thread. And I uh, just want to make sure that that's pinched up nicely, not too much. There we go. And that is the Red Sea reef mat basically plumbed in now. Right, okay, so I've gone ahead and uh, sort of brought the wire through the back here, up at the top um, and over and round. And we're gonna take the actual drive motor now. Um, and I'm gonna mount this on the right hand side. So the blanking plate um, I've removed from this side and put it onto the left because I want the motor on the right. Now on the back here, we've got one for the sensor and one for the power. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pop the one for the power on now. Now for ease, I think I'm gonna also pop this one on as well. This is the sensor for when the water gets too high and that's what will then turn the motor to bring the new clean uh, roll of, uh, of floss round. So they're both on there. And then I'm just gonna leave that kind of dangling for the moment. I'll clip that on in a bit. Uh, the motor goes through, so these two uh, red cogs, you're gonna put that through those two holes there on the right hand side. And then we've got this clip and that will then clip over like so, and that holds the motor in. As far as the little sensor is concerned, that's gonna clip onto the side here. <coughs> And then we're going to place our, let's put all these bits in so we know where they all go. That's going to go on the back like so. The one with the fleece on, and drop that into there for the moment. And we're going to pull out a reasonable amount of this and drop it down sort of into the water there uh, because this piece is what's going to go down and then we're going to screw this round so it goes into place. And then this is going to get threaded onto here 
go through that little slot in the middle there, bring it out the other side, like so. So if I just drop that back down on there, you can see that's coming through the, um, the centre bit. I'm going to hold on to it and I want to kind of wind this around, keeping it as straight as I can, just until we've kind of captured enough on that side so it can't, you know, pull back through. Hopefully that's going to be enough there. Um, and then we've got the little side pieces that will just, that will lift up. The one on the right, that also clips up as well into place, that holds that in. Right, so next what we need to do is take this piece, which earlier was uh, all clipped together. Uh, hopefully you can see that, it just sort of kind of clips into there, like so. So, oops, there we go. So all I've done is just undone them, so they're now two separate parts. You wanna make sure that the little slot is uh, on all four is facing towards you. We're then going to reach underneath our excess bit of roll here, place that onto there. This piece will now go back on. There we go, that clips in. So that's just clipped in on all four sides. Double check that, yes it is. Um, and now what we need to do is pop this down and uh, as I mentioned before, we've got the um, slots here at the top so when this is placed down and it's lined up with the two pipes we're then going to turn this around so the slots will end up being down at the bottom and as I say we've got a bit of excess roll here but that's fine and then we'll place this down in the bottom just watching for your sensor and now we're gonna rotate the pipe so that those slots are facing down as I say that's what locks it into place we can now take our guide roll. That will get clipped into this front section there. We can raise this up. We can now take off any slack that we've got, pop that into place, lift up the handle, and clip it down into position. And that's it. Right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it on and hopefully we will see the little lights come up on the unit there. There we go. Power's on. And then we've got the light flashing. That's gonna be sending out the signal now which we should be able to pick up on the phone. Um, obviously now, hopefully you can see we've got the static power light. We've now got the static light to show connectivity. The other light is like a warning error light, so that's off, so that's good. And I'm going to go ahead now and turn on the uh, return pump, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully we won't get loads of water spraying everywhere. <laughs> but this is reef drama, and anything can happen. So there we go. Return pump is on. Some is draining down as we speak. Hopefully you can see that. can hear it starting to come down the overflow a little cleaner rasp down there he's got a lot more space to swim around in now of course he can go all the way into there and under the reef mat whereas before he couldn't get into that section okay so well that's it and uh, let me bring you in um, on the phone camera and you can see where the water level is at the moment right so hopefully you can see down there and zoom in maybe just a little bit You've got the water level there, you can just see it sort of shimmering, moving. Okay, and then if we have a look at the other side, we can see where our sensor is, which is just here, where my finger is. And currently the water level is down there. That's where the water level is at the moment. So it's got to come all the way up to here to hit the sensor before the uh, roller will activate. So again, just bring you back round, have a quick look on this side. Probably not much point having a look over the top, but we'll do it anyway just to see. Don't know if you're gonna see anything in there. Hopefully you will. Water obviously all coming in. But the main thing will be now just to wait 
for the roller itself to wind itself on. Hopefully we might be able to capture that. See how it goes. Yeah, it's getting up there. Now obviously as you can see there, there's two holes either side, so that's an overflow. So if the sensor fails, uh, then um, it will just overflow out through those two sides. But I'll come back when this uh, hopefully starts to roll on. Right, that water now is literally right up to the very bottom of that sensor. It must be, if I can zoom in now, hopefully you can just see the water look. It's just touching the very bottom. Any second now, that this is gonna go off. For the first time, in this tank anyway, I wanna see it rolling on. So come on, hurry up. Here we go guys, just turned itself on. Oh, oh and that was it. Let's turn itself off again now. Wow, that was a bit of an anti-climax, wasn't it? Well, anyway, it, <laughs> it has rolled it round, and if you can see, the water has dropped from the sensor all the way back down to there. Um, I thought, to be honest, it was going to roll round a little, <laughs> a little bit more than that. I don't even know if I caught the beginning of it on the video, but anyway, let me see if I can get this in the top. So a little look down inside. I don't know if you can see that. I zoom in yeah see a bit of dirt there anyway so at least it's working I mean that was that was really the main sort of test for this and and sort of waiting and sitting around for this to kick in um, so it, it is it is working it is rolling round um, so I'm just gonna leave it now and uh, yeah I'll give it a couple of days and then as I said before what I'll do is I'll come back and uh, let you know how it's all getting on a quick view with the old cleaner Rass where is he there he is Say hello. All right, mush. All right, it's enough of that. Yep, okay, so we'll be back in a couple of days time. All right then guys, so I said I'd come back after a couple of days. It's actually been about four days. So I've just literally got in from work and I thought I'm gonna to have to get this video done so as I can get it out. Um, but just to give you an update, the reef mat is working flawlessly. It's doing a really, really good job. Not if you can see, but the dirty reel over there is uh, definitely getting bigger. Um, obviously it's using it down, but even that roll I've still got probably about that much left at the moment. So pretty good, really happy with that. Um, I have increased the, uh, the roll kind of um, uh, advance. So it's set to 0 0.5 um, to I think 1.0 when you first sort of set it up or well, that's what it advises. Um, and I've now got it to about 2.0 centimeters as far as the, the advanced rolling on is concerned. Um, so I've increased that slightly, but what I'll do is I'll get you in in the moment just to have a bit of a closer look. Um, but uh, with regards to the app, I will be doing a separate video on the app. Obviously this video is already quite long. Uh, so as far as setting up the app is concerned and connecting it to the reef mat, that will be uh, in a separate video. So if you've liked this video, give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you're not subscribed, then please subscribe to the channel. That certainly does help me out a lot. Um, and uh, if you press the little notification bell, then that will let you know as and when I upload more videos like the app uh, one that's gonna be coming up. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get you in and just uh, show you quickly uh, what's going on inside. So there we go then guys. So you can see all the dirt there at the back. If I bring you in over the top, you can see all that lovely muck. Oh, it's just kicked in. <laughs> um, see all that lovely muck that it's pulling out. If you can see down there as well. Um, the water has dropped down to there. So on the other side, you can sort of see where the water is dropping down to compared to where that sensor is. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with this. It's doing, uh, it's doing really good. Um, and it's really keeping all the, the debris and detritus out the bottom of the sump. Uh, so yeah, very, very pleased. We will be going through at some point very soon uh, a replacement roll because I want to take this off and actually keep what's left on here and put a brand new roll on. Uh, then that way, uh, if ever the brand new roll doesn't arrive in time, I'll always have some that I can quickly put on um, just to keep it uh, running. So yeah, really, really good. Really, really happy with that. So then guys, that's it uh, for this video. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.